And she told me she needed money because she said there's no food. So I must have had about 80 pounds in sterling left. I'll never forget. I guess I said, all right, how that? And I said, um, I'll come and see you later once I've done my exam. I went to get my son now. I found my sister there with him and her sister. So I said, oh, where is she? She said, oh, she, she's, um, she's gone out. So I said, oh, I said, I thought she's supposed to be doing food shopping for the, the kids, not just my one, but other two. And someone told me she's gone Birmingham Raven. <laughs> What's going on, people? And welcome back to the Baby Fathers podcast for another brand new episode. I'm your host, and I go by the name of DJ Riddler. Before we start today's video, I need you lot to do me a big favor. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share, and press the notification button. So anytime a brand new episode comes out, you lot are going to be the first to know. All right. So on today's show, we got another special guest. He goes by the name of Sean. How you doing, Sean? How you doing? I want to say thank you for coming down today, my bro. Thanks, that's all right. Um, what made you come down to the Baby Fathers? Well, you know, there's been issues with my own situation, with my own children. Mm -hmm. um, I do a bit of campaign, as you know, beforehand with Equal Star. We're trying to get parity for dads and mums in the UK. Um, we do with parental alienation okay. in my activism work. Um, all parliamentary group in Westminster, okay. where we help out. We're trying to change the political framework, the legislation, so it benefits everyone. Mm -hmm. And I want to come down there and talk with you so we can raise awareness about that. Wicked. Um, sounds good. All right. So listen, before we get in, into your story, mm -hmm. I have to put a disclaimer out there. All right. So anything what you say today is your truth and it's your truth only. No one can't say anything different because it's coming from you to how you see it to be. Mm. All right. How many kids do you have? I've got three. You've got three. three. Mm. From the same other? No, two different women. Um, first son is with uh, a lady from South London and I've got a wife where I've got two kids. We've been together 16 years now. Okay, so the one you had the situation with clearly is the first mother mm, yeah. with your son. How did that story first start? We got together about 05, 06. Um, reasonable. She was a reasonable lady, very charismatic. On the surface, you think, oh, it'd be a lovely relationship. I said, you know, at the time I had a little shared housing, so I thought, Let's see how things go. I don't want anything too serious because I said I've, I've got a little, you know, a couple part-time jobs. Got my little golf mark free. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, yeah, I was styling. I had my little shared housing. So whenever I had any ladies, I could bring them around. Yeah. No problem. And this one, she said, oh, well, you know, I'm looking for something more serious. Well, I said, nah, I'm not too sure. And six weeks later, yeah, she told me she was up the duff. Mm. So I said, oh, uh, mm. I said, remember I told you I'm not really, I don't really want to be locked down at 24, so, 25. So did you tell her, in the beginning, beginning, you wasn't looking to have kids or? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. To be fair, yeah, let me clear that up, yeah. In the beginning, before we even slept together, I told her, I said, look, obviously I'm a student. I've got two little part-time jobs. You see me in my thing, I'm trying to make a life. I mm. said, I'm not in a financial stable enough place to be entertaining long-term relationships. Let's just see how things go. I'm not saying it's impossible, mm. but let's see how things go for a while, you know? So, did she tell you she was on the pill or you chose not to use condoms? No, no, she, you she, was, she was on. I used to see her take it still. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she, to be fair, she already had two children from two different men. Okay. So that was the thing. So I said, yeah, I'm not really. Because I said, if, when it, if it was from the same man, I said I would have been more copacetic with it. But um, when she told me it was two different men and she was only 24, I said, nah, I'm, I'm not really. So was it more mm. of like a link or was you actually in a relationship with her? Well, I say it's a link. But then when she told me she's breeding, and I thought, well, mm. I said, I don't want to be a deadbeat dad. So I said, all right, I'm going to give you about a year or two, see if you can walk the path of redemption. Because I said, my, my maternal grandmother, she had four children with four different men before she married my granddad. And they were together for 42 years okay. before, she, before he died. So I said, look, there's still, I'm not saying it's irredeemable, but I said, I need to see, you know, progressive things from you. And at the time, you wasn't judging her? No, nah, no, nah, not yeah. really. Because, well, I suppose inwardly, I think, yes, yeah, a bit heated. But I said, you know what, we get along... She used to come mm. around, you know, to get me. When she's come to my shared house, she used to bring the little groceries. So was mm. you willing to play the father role to her kids? To be fair, initially, no, nah, not really. Because obviously the time I thought, mm, it's a bit of a lot of responsibility. I said, let's see how things go. I said, if mm. you know, a year or two. And I said, maybe 
it can develop like with, with my grandparents. I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm reasonable with that. And was their dads around? Her kids' yeah, dads uh, was around? The, the first son's dad was around. He used to, but he used to take his son every other weekend. So I said, mm. And then the second one, his dad went around. So to be fair, I did like the second one. We, he, for some reason, he he preferred me more than my own son eventually. In, initially, when she told me she's pregnant, after about four or five months, because what happened, she lived with her mother still okay. and her, sister, her half-sister. And I said, look, that is, it's a three bedroom house. You've got two kids, your daughter's got a newborn. Your mum's got a, a child that's the same age as your middle son. So it was, mm -hmm. it was, I said, this is the structure is, all, they said, I don't, I know your thing. I said, I don't really come from that. In mm -hmm. my, in my household, nuclear family, mum and dad married for, for years. And said, there's two, two brothers, my brother and, and I got one sister and I'm not used to that. So I said, what will I do? I'll move you out. I'll, I'll go and find you a private accommodation. And I said, whatever the housing benefit won't pay, I will pay on top. Okay. So that's what we done. We, I moved her to Fulton Heath. And how did it? How did she introduce mm. the kids to you when you? Yeah. See, that was that was a bit. That that was flames. That was a bit odd. And how did that I told go? Down? I didn't want to meet her children until you know we've been together at least four or five months. By right this time though, she told me she was pregnant. So I said, all right, no, I'll meet them, but not right now. But right, within how many mm. months did you did meet them? Mm, well, to be fair, she soon after she was pregnant, she what she did, she said, come to meet her one day on the road where her mother lived. Mm. And then I came to meet and they came out. So she she kind of twisted, she kind of coerced the situation. And said, this is my boyfriend? Yeah. Or? No, no, she just said, oh, this is my friend. She never said boyfriend. Okay. But obviously the, the one, the eldest was seven then. So he already knew the play. He wasn't simple. Mm. Yeah, so he knew the play. So obviously I was reasonable and said, hello, how are you doing? Yeah, you're being good boys for your mum and things like that. Yes, yeah, general, general chit chat. And then over the period in the next couple of months, I had to go to her mum's. So what was your relationship with her first son? Now, to be fair, initially, he was a bit standoffish. But when he see that I was coming quite often compared to, obviously, he was seeing me back that time more than his own dad. So he started to warm to me, surprisingly. And I always thought I'd have problems with him because he was he used to be cheeky to his mother and say some outlandish stuff. Like I said, what? I said already he's judging and he's only seven, eight years old. And how was your relationship with the second child? Yeah, the seconds, he embraced me straight away, which I found a bit intense at first because I said, look, I've only just come along. And I and I think, you know, if I leave or someone else comes, it's going to be the same thing. It's, a bit, it's all a bit trifling and confused. I don't believe that young children really should be introduced to new partners unless you've been through them at least six months. When did it start going wrong in your lot's relationship? To be fair, I'd say... Within a few months, it wasn't it, initially before my son was born. We was even though we'd have periods of where it's calm and peace when we get along, we'd have serious mm. arguments. Where I said, you know what, I can't put up with you. You, you, you're not. You said you're not serious enough with the finances. When I'm telling you, like when I'm going to work and that, and I'm minding your other kids that are not mine. I need you to come back so I can go back to work. So because at the time I had um, a market research job. So when you're saying you need her to come back, come yeah, back she, from she, where? She, she, so mm. when she used to disappear. Mm. Is it she used to disappear for hours or she used to disappear for days? No, no, hours, hours, hours. Like, say, for instance, I, I had a shift pattern, usually six to ten after university or on the days where I had off. And she'd be like, oh, I'm going to come back. I'm just going to go shop. Or I'm going to go out with my friend. I said, yeah, no problem. I mean, um, I got my son in them way there. So you're so watching said, your son and yeah, your Yeah, of course, yeah. But obviously I have to mind them. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm having my child and letting them run wild. So I said, listen. I want you to embrace my structure. I know I'm not your dad, but I want you to embrace this structure. Things have obviously now gone left mm. in your lot's relationship. Mm. She wasn't coming home when you was meant to go to work. When you was completely done with her, mm. what happened after that? I just went back to my, my place. And then eventually, a few months later, I got my one bedroom <laughs> council place. So I moved further out from Strattonville to Wimbledon. Mm. So because my son was young and I didn't want any, you know, too much of fellas, males coming around him while he was under a year old. I still used to see her for the carnal part. So mm. when you was co-parent of her, mm. when you both finished, did she get into another relationship pretty straight no, away? No, not, not that I was aware of. I knew there's people that liked her even when I was with her. So, but it's the way she was. So I didn't expect no different. Was these her friends? No, yeah, well, it's uh, I had no proof, but I suspected they weren't. Some of them used to do like you know DIY stuff for her paint, okay. help her with it, like fix her car engine when she had troubles. And but I didn't mind that because by that time I was already campaigning again. So I said that's all right. I said all I'm saying is that try and minimize the corruption around the children because they're all under ten. And said so if you keep doing that, I said what will happen? You move on, 
they come in and see the situation free for boy children different men they're, they're not gonna say that as much as you you want it and you may desire it it's unlikely they're gonna stay around more than five minutes so i said you need to think about that before doing all this but it's like in the, the mindset was like oh well you know my mother done this because her mother had three children three different men okay. and then her grandmother is something similar so it's not, like a pattern in their yeah, family. Yeah, so I said, it's a generation said, yeah, that's not something I can be part of long term. So I said, look, I'm I'm trying to do my best with the coping. But I said, the best thing is that you, know, you live your life, I live mine. So I said, what I'll do is have my son as much as possible. So at this point, I was having him three days a week okay. for the first three years of his life. He was like that. And then, did, and then my, my, I would have him on my days off from university because I used to get two days off in the week. And then I keep him Friday. And then when I used to do my security door work, night work, nightclub work, I would give him back. And then I come to my parents on a Sunday and find him there. So he said, "Wait a minute, what? How long has he been here? From from when you came, when you went to work on Friday, he's been here since." So I said, "You're effectively only having Monday and Tuesday, since he was like seven, eight months old, until he's free." So I said, "I'm gonna have to look about full time because I said, you're not up to it." No, no, that can't work. That can't work. That's my that's my child. I'm the birth birthing parent. I said, yeah. I said anybody can be an incubator, just like a man. Any man can be a sperm donor. I said the real mother strikes. So, did you go for full custody after? No, that took a, a while. When I first, when I was in my sophomore year at university, I went and saw Duncan Lewis Ulysses in Tooting, and I tried to show them because I was keeping a dossier at this time about some of the incidences, like leaving them in his own, too much men around. Obviously, the little narcotics and things like that. I said, listen, I don't want him around there. So he said, you know what? You're in shared housing. And he said, then he said, you, how would you house him in terms of the, because it says sofa bed in your bedroom, because you're living in one room. He said, it's unlikely the courts will give it to you, give it you full residency, full custody. So I said, and also you're not in a stable relationship. He said, you're going to have to change that. They want to see there's, there's a woman around that because basically step in. So I said that, I found that a bit odd because at the time I was thinking idealistically, like, yeah, super dad, and I'll take him in and build my empire. And, you know, come and live with me, kind of like um, Bjorn in Vikings with, with Ragnar when he took his son. So I said, yeah, yeah, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something like that. And I realised all the, that's when I first come across the cultural barriers. They were like, oh, well, why would you want to do that? He should be with his mother. So he's basically that's what this is telling me. So I said, unless you get that in place, he said, the most you can hope for is shared custody. So I said, well, that's reasonable, at least. Because obviously, I said, he obviously has to see his mother. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and go off there. He said, look, this is the money. So I said, at them time there, with the money I said, how can I afford that? So we went on like that for another five, six years, where I try and keep him as much as possible. And I started to say, you know what, when he was at my parents, where I'd say, listen, stop dropping off my parents. I don't want them to be constantly coming in and trying to parent us when we're dealing with our own child. But I realised it was probably better that he spent, when I was doing the door work, when I used to go out and work at night on the weekend, mm -hmm. that he's with them because then it would minimise the contact with the kind of lifestyle she's having, the kind of characters she had around and the different men and the, the, the lifestyle problems. So stuff. is this stuff, what you're saying, do you know that as a fact? Yeah, no, 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 it's a fact. It's a fact. Okay. It's a fact. That's yeah. part of the reason why I left her. The, the, day, the day we mashed up, she went to Birmingham. I came back from Jamaica to see my granddad. He had prostate cancer. And um, I had to go straight into a new media journalism exam. And she told me she needed money because she said there's no food. So I must have about 80 pounds in sterling left. I'll never forget. I guess I said, all right, hold that. And I said, um, I'll come and see you later once I've done my exam. I went to get my son now. I found my sister there with him and her sister. So I said, oh, where, where is she? She said, oh, she, she's, um, she's gone out. So I said, oh, I said, I thought she's supposed to be doing food shopping for the, the kids, not just my one, but the other two. And someone told me she's gone Birmingham raving. So I rang her up and said, where are you? She said, oh, I'm just out and about. I said, do I look like Booby the Fool? Do I look like a mug? I said, where are you? Answer me. She said, oh, I'm out with my friends. Yeah, I, I, I've gone out. I said, where? Oh, in Birmingham. So I said, yeah, we're done. Mm -hmm. I said, I've had enough of you. Ramadan. That's it. So that's done. when you got broke up? Yeah, you're not, that's, yeah, that's when I got rid of. Uh, mm -hmm. I effectively left there. I said, that's it. I don't, I'm, I'm done with you. I said, then she, you know, she said, are you sure? Are you sure? I said, don't try and show off because your friends are there. 
said I'm, I'm not putting up with that we're finished so I say for about three or four months I was still looking after the, the carnal side of things I said look I said I don't mind us you know the relationship can't work between us we're two, two different camps you're the water I'm oil mm. yeah so said we can't think but I said to minimize the corruption and I don't want too much you know bucks coming in and with it. it's not just my son but your children as well I said because what happened they're watching you when you're doing that so I said I'll take care of the carnal pleasures you know and I'll go about my free agent now so to be fair I made sure my cousin was there at the time so she couldn't say oh it's my word against hers so she went and done that so I cut all that once I heard about yeah she's a man she's seeing man again then I said yeah I won't be seeing you no more I stopped the carnal side as well I said as long as I deal with my pitney and you don't block any access or play any games so you I'm stopped looking you. after her two sons when she moved in or when she started dating no no to be fair i still used to interact with them like when my son's birthday i'll take them but in terms of financing like financing to be fair at the time i was only paying the rent Mm. what the housing benefit wouldn't cover so the only time i really got them anything is like see food shopping obviously i'll buy food because everyone's in the house but i wouldn't really buy no clothes and stuff like that for them unless it's a special occasion honestly we've more left it to their fathers yeah yeah yeah, yeah, especially the eldest because his dad was around a couple times he used to come there and he says oh you your mum's new man, does he hit you? I heard one time when he was cutting his ear. And I spoke to him afterwards. Once he finished cutting his ear, I said, look, I, said, I appreciate you. I wouldn't want no one coming in and doing my trial like that. I can understand that. But I said, look, I'm in more time. So I said, we've got to come to an arrangement. And I said, I find that odd because me and you, because this man I actually knew, used to go with St. Andrews in Stockwell Park Estate when we were young. He was a couple of years older than me. So I said, look, I'm trying to be reasonable. You don't see your son a saying about um, mishandling him. I said, your son's even draw, drawing pictures of me in his primary school book instead of you. I said, don't you find that odd, even though you're seeing him every other week. But then I found out that he's a man that when he takes his child, he was giving it to his mother. Okay. So he wasn't One really, of them ones wasn't, not, yeah, not yeah, yeah. So he wasn't doing what I was doing, you see what I mean? He weren't, so there's, like I said, you know, you just like you get miscreant mothers. And what's your views on that fathers going, leaving their child yeah, at their see, parents' house see, not spending time with them? Personally, I don't rave, but I said, look, I don't want anyone telling me what to do with my children, so I would really say anything, unless they ask me. Yeah, but I, personally, I don't think that's a good thing, because it's not only in terms of, you know, the responsibility, but I said, think about when they grow up, the relationship. You want to give them the best chance to have a good relationship with your children when they grow up, because they said, you know what, my dad was there. My dad loved me regardless. So you want that, you want that, that should be the basis of any family, the, the interpersonal relationship, mutual benefit, you, you grow up, you say, look, they support me and that. We have a good relationship. So when you're old now, they're not like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with you. Or I've seen like certain dads where they said, look, you're dying or you're terminally ill and they don't even want to come and look for you. Yeah. I said, I've seen, I've seen molesters get things like that, have small contact. Mm. And you've got a child that is reasonable. You, you come from a reasonable background. Why don't you try and foster good relations? Mm. But some people, they, I, I realize inwardly, emotionally, they're not built like that. It's like there's a kind of barrier or distance or a vacuum or they've had problems with their own parents so, and they're just repeating the pattern. It's serious. Where I used to think my mother used to tell me about generational curses or, you know, like certain traits in families. I said, nah, nah, you got to be reasonable. You can't just judge it like that. But from the patterns I've seen, I can see what my yeah. mother used to say that now. When you lot have now broken up, mm. you've gotten on your life, she's getting on her mm. life. Did she ever then stop you from seeing your child? No, nah, she used to try and say, you know what? She might have to think, you know, drop a dime on me to this child maintenance service. But I used to say, listen, in my left hand is benefit fraud, in my right hand is social services. Which one do you want? So she soon stopped all that. You talked about you was getting your child full time. Mm. Did that happen? No, 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 no. I went to I went uh, to be fair. It was it was traumatic to be fair because I thought I had a bank to rights and there was no way I couldn't get him because because you know when I told you I, I kept a dossier. Mm. So all the things she done over years. When I finally snapped one day when she told me she, um, well not, she never told me, my son told me, he came around and told me he had um, contact with a man that served eight years for molestation. She's moved on, mm-hmm. you moved on. Mm-hmm. What happened after that into your new relationship? To be fair, with my new relationship is, I'd say seven months after I, got, I left her, I um, got with my, my second parent. You know, my children's mother, the second one, so. The wife? Yeah, well, yeah, the wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the wife, yeah, the wife. But obviously she went the wife then, though. Yeah, but you, you, then, you, you could, yeah, you could wife, give her the yeah, title, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. The wife, yeah. Um, your wife, who she is now, 
at the time she wasn't when you obviously mm. met her, but you got with her. Mm. Did that cause any conflictions between your last child's mother? Yeah, we, hers? We, I'd say it was there was a bit of jealousy there because obviously at the time my um, eldest got along well with her. I'm oh, sorry. So the child comes and sees you. Obviously, the mum had jealousy from time to time. Mm. What kind of things was she doing showing you yeah, where she, she could be jealous? She, she did silly things about, I hope you ain't paying happy families with my son. Well, the mm. one time she came to meet us in two and we came back from the cinema. And she said, yeah, what, what's all this? I see, I see you playing thing with her. I said, yeah, well, we've been together for a few years now, love. He said, look, we've gone to cinema. You've, you said you to think, because at the time you're not driving. I said, neither was I. So I said, look, just come and meet us at Tooting. Come to Tooting. She come to Tooting and then she's making statements like that off the cuff. So things like that. And then what was weird as well, every now and then she'll be like, oh, when I, she's collecting from me, from my parents, because I used to go to my parents on a Sunday with him, have him the Friday, go Sunday, have Sunday dinner, and then she would collect him from my parents because it's on a few roads away. And she do things like, oh, I can't I get a hug? I know you're with your, your partner, but come on, I've, don't you say I'll give you a handsome son? There's one time even when I was first with her, she came round. I don't know what was wrong with her. I was in my dressing gown. She tried to undo the dressing gown while my <laughs> current wife was in the bedroom. And I said, don't make a fool of yourself. I said, my yeah. woman's next door. Don't yeah. be silly. Said, oh, is that right? She went in there to look at her. I said, I know you're not being delusional, are you? So it was stuff like that. She petty things, things I wouldn't do that with her, wherever whoever she was dealing with knew. I wouldn't think. And then what I find amazing, she used to say, "Oh, you know what? I haven't seen anyone since you left me." So, so <laughs> but she knows. Yeah, she I knows. said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "Then you're telling me about you, this never calling my name, Sean, that he's gone and seen Jamaica." I said, "You, you slack. You don't even remember your own lies." You said, "I mean, mm. you bamboozling yourself." I said, "You, I blog these things." So when you're telling me that trying to. When I'm pleasing you, we're getting along and you're trying to drop in these kind of manipulation, go ask me. So listen, from once you told me you take a new man, I said, that will never trouble you again. He said, never. He said, even if it crosses my mind, I said, I'll never trouble you again. You've taken next man and then you, you have my pitney. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to put up. I said, I mean it. I'm not like other men, but I said, yeah, you know what? Maybe, you know, one or four, you know, I'm in trouble or I'm not getting along with my car. I said, I'm never, I'll never sleep with you again. Mm. So that was it. I'll never, never trouble that again. After when she's started to have, you know, relations with other men, never. Mm. Mm. I think men do have a problem with that. Like, if, if, they know, if they know a man, well, mm. certain men have got different morals. Mm. So you understand, but my moral, if a man's been there, I wouldn't, I couldn't go back to that. You mm. understand? I have to keep on going straight. Mm. And that's that. You get mm. me? See, I agree with you. I agree with you there. Jeez. <laughs> we need to, if we more of us done that, there'd be better relationship and more discipline, more clarity. Mm. So there was something you said a bit earlier on what I want to touch on. So you mm. said before that she was dating a guy who was apparently, allegedly he was a child molester. No, what happened is he was her sister's baby father. Okay. Okay. Mm. And when that happened, what did you do as a father once you knew that? Um, yeah, I went straight to child services cause, well, because I've had things when I'd flared up before and then I've seen how um, it's gone. I said, you know what, if anything goes on, she'll go to the police. So I said, yeah, and I don't want to be, I'd already been, you know, pulled up for an affair and offensive weapon. So I said, no, nah, I'm not going to go down that route. So I said, let me just try and give the system a chance to work. So what happened now? is when I went there to the child services, they were like saying, oh, why didn't you go to court straight away? I said, because obviously it's um, a molester. So I said, I know they usually put in protections, child protection. So she has to have, you know, supervised access or transfer residencies because I said, I want him full time. So I said, oh, but why would you want to do that? I said, why wouldn't I? I said, there's a history of it in the family. So why would I want him full time? I said, I've tried to give her a birth, but it, he's, he's like seven, eight years old now. So I'm trying to give him a birth. No, 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 that can't work. So it, the court hearings were delayed. So we never actually got to court till after he turned 10. So how yeah. many years was that? Yeah, well, I'd say well, about 15 months. All right, so once mm. you've gone to court, mm. what happened in there? It's uh, diabolical. Went in there, at that time I had a dossier that I'd provide the child services with, but they said, you have to mention that in court. So when I went in there, they said, all right, we need to structure it into a court bundle where we can read it out. Cause at that moment, you just kept like a, a like a journal. Mm -hmm. They said, we need it in this structure. So they adjourned it. So again, the more delays, I had to go back there cause I was self-representing the money they were paying. Uh, I said, I could only afford the 250 for the court fee at the time, but I couldn't have no brief. They were telling me about 250 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on 
23 pound an hour so i said yeah that don't work yeah i can't afford that so they don't have much savings so that can't work so i decided to self-represent so once i've eventually read up and how to order the court bundle into the structure that they like that they want to be presented i went in for yeah i've got a banter right so we went in there she bought her sister i bought one of my cousin and my one of my friends that i used to work with that was ymca young men's christian mm -hmm. association so we went in there and said, oh, well, you know, you can only bring in one person. So we done that. I said, yeah, she can, I don't mind her bringing in her sister as long as I can bring in my cousin. So he was like a kind of like my Mackenzie friend. Mm. So we went in there and I told her, look, this is the owner. This is what's happened over the years. It's not, I haven't taken this decision lightly. This is what's gone on. I said, unfortunately, the Section 7 report that you got from the child service worker is tainted. I said, I have a feeling that she's some kind of feminist misandrist. Because I said, I've shown her the case history she told me i can't submit that to her that i must bring that to court yeah i said i've looked in a section seven report and she's done first chapter she's put in family history and she's left out the dossier I provided her so i said already it's tainted so then she's tried to say that this person that you know, was a molester convicted served eight years has come out secretly and having day trips to london dungeons with my son so i said the mother's lying and trying to cover up and getting my son, coercing my son to say the same thing. Mm. So they said, oh, well, that can't work. That can't work. How dare you? His mother. He's, that's not true. The social worker is telling the truth. So I said, you want me to play the recording? So they said, that's not admissible in court. But I said, you can transcribe it. Mm. So when we had the next hearing now, I transcribed it. Okay, mm. And then I, uh, because I had it recorded on my phone. When he said, because oh, at the time I didn't tell him he was a molester. He just said, oh, dad, I went... You know, to yeah, yeah, you London Dungeons. You knew by the name. You knew yeah, the name yeah, of the yeah. guy. So I, said, hmm? I said, wait a minute. In my mind, I said, what? He's come out. I never knew he was out. So I said, look, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to transcribe it. So I went there, thinking here, yeah, look, bang to rights. My son saying, yeah, he went London Dungeons with this fella. It's true. It's where they found out when they tried to say, oh, I mixed up the dates. So I said, basically, what I was saying, he was still inside when I said he had contact with my son. So I said. Think about it. Why would I even think about him? And how would I know he's out unless someone told me? So I said, I, I find it convenient that the child service workers tried to change the dates to make it like a year before it came out, like I was a mistaken. That I'm, it's, a, it's a tactical way of saying I'm lying. Because I said, look, she said, oh, his concerns are warranted, but the assailant was inside. So what was the outcome of that case? Yeah, I got five hours on the Saturday. Oh, but they gave you five hours. Five hours on a Saturday. Uh, which they said, he said, uh, it's up to him how often, if you want to extend it. Because obviously he said, if he wants to stay with you, we're not going to say, it can only be five hours. But as a basic guideline, so you, five hours a Saturday. So you took her to court. Mm. But what did you put in your statement when he went into court? What was you actually asking for? I was asking for full residency. So and, to have, and her to have supervised contact. That's what I put in. And out of that, they only gave you five hours? Five hours, man. Five hours. Okay, so mm. on what grounds were they saying the well, reason they said, why? Oh, you said with this back and forth because it was, it was the first part of the court here, and I say it took about eighteen months overall. So I said, "Oh, look, you 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 you're not really seeing your son. You need to rebuild the relationship." This is the kind of way they try to coerce you. I said, "Rebuild the relationship." I said, "How's that so?" I said, "I've seen him." He said, "Oh, yes, but you've been to his school to go and see him, and you're sending um, presents without the mother's consent." So I said. Hmm? I said, I said you're a guy in a centric feminist. No, no, I'm just saying in terms of thing, he, he wants to live with the mother. Obviously, he stated in the Section 7 report, he wants to live with his mother. I said, yeah, but I said, I know what you're dealing with, the voice of the child, but I said, I'm dealing with the best interests for my son. The best interests. He said, that doesn't always align. He said, a learned person would know that. He said, you're sitting up there with your powdered wig in gowns, in costumes, yeah, and telling me that. I said, think about it said, what reasonable man who loves their children would want someone to still maintain residency when they're exposing them to convict them unless they served eight years? And I proved it to you now. Mm. said, remember, you've caught, she's actually confirmed that she's lied in court because her sister's not here because it's another hearing now. So it's just me and her. So she's only doing that because there's no audience to shame her. I said, I've got the transcribed. I said, I bought, I had to pay 960 pounds for this court transcript. That's the, her next thing, because a lot of people, they don't do that. They think, oh, well, you're not allowed to record anything or you got sent to prison and you're not allowed to speak about these proceedings outside of that. I said, when I buy the transcript, I can. I said, otherwise you can lock me up. Mm. I willingly go to jail for that. 
So how old was your son at the time when he said that he wanted to stay? He was with 10. He's 10. Okay. He's 10. But what, what I find it convenient on the Section 7 report, because I thought he was going to say, oh, I don't like him and thing. He turned around and said, the reason why is because I'm too strict and make him do his homework. Mm. So I said, my God. So to be fair, I was never the same with him again after that. Mm. All right. So when that then happened, you was seeing him for five hours mm. and all of that. What happened after that? Is that only went on for about four or five months. Then he started to say, oh, you know what? Um, Mum said I can't think anymore. Susan, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, because she said she don't like you where you're chatting her. And you call police and my mother said, what are you talking about, son? I said, when I done that, it's because she had you run a Jimmy Savile type. So I said, would you want me to come in there and kick off the door and lick down your mother? Is that what you're telling me? Said no. So I said, what? What? He said, when you're older and you have your own children, we'll see what you do then. Because so I said that to me, that there's something wrong mentally. So I tried to get him actually counseling through Lighthouse. Because I said, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong there. But is it because he wanted to stay with his mum? Yeah, no. But the thing is, he used to come, you see what happened? My son used to talk out both sides of his mouth. You come to mine. So, Dad, that mum's got a new boyfriend. As mum's always going out. She's always trying to leave me with other people. Oh, dad, my auntie, his friend hit me in my head. So I said, son, you're telling me these things for me to get steam. And then when I come in there and I like guns blazing, you're like, oh, daddy. So said, so son, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fed up with you. I've watched you. you. You like talking about both sides of your mouth. And then what are you saying? I said, your mum tell me certain times when you say, when you come in, oh, it's boring. Dad's, he, don't, he don't go nowhere. So I said, eh, son? So we have to be proving what I'm doing with you in them way there. Mm. So I said, you're being divisive. I don't like it. So stop talking out of both sides of your mouth. All right, let me ask you a question. And this is on a, on a, on a, real, on a real question still. Mm. Like, how do you feel knowing that she was bringing, or well, allegedly bringing... Not if, allegedly. So this <laughs> one, okay. Mm. She was bringing men around your, your mm. child. Mm. And you know that she's bringing men around mm. your child. Now, how do you sleep at night? Does it bother you or did it no, bother wait, you? Wait, before, the, before I found out about this molester type, which was the day before the her half sister, mm. yeah? I was all right with it because the way I see the fair what about seven months before I got with my current wife, but in between I had, you know, I was, I was kind of warming back up to the whole campaign and said, yeah, mm. you know, swap out new, fresh. I said, she's trying to get rid of the bad feeling out of my system. I said, you know, what? I've been locking myself up. And mm. no, you know, so, but then obviously uh, my wife came along and, you know, she said, yeah, she ain't tolerating that. I mm. said, if you want a serious relationship, we need to stop all that stuff. So yeah, look, we went along. I'm fine with my, I'm not really thinking about all that. Her child wanted to stay with her, so you couldn't actually hold, have him full, full time. Mm. What happened after that? Well, after that, it's five hours and disappeared to like every couple of weeks. Mm. Then I noticed when I used to say, son, you're going to come, because he still used to ring me. I said, oh, son, why are you coming around? Oh, I'm busy, I'm going party. I said, party, son. He said, your younger brother is asked to see you. This time he's like a toddler now. Mm. So I said, he wants to see you. Oh, well, Dad, when you got other things to do, don't you go and, go and do them? I said, no, nah, not when it comes to my family, son. All right, so let me ask you this mm. question then, because you see my father principles and morals. Mm. What is your principles and morals when you're teaching your son? In terms of what? In relationships or? Relationship, discipline. Mm. Well, at that time, he's young, so we wouldn't really talk I'm about I'm just talking about in general, in just in general. Well, when it comes to my children, I said, look, this is what we stand for. Look, I used to call it, as you say, the Buchanan Code kind of inspired from the stuff I used to read when I was young when they talked about families that built dynasties. I said, look, this is what we stand for, yeah? Death before dishonor, family first, you see it? And you must ride. When when there's trouble, you don't second guess it. You see what I mean? You you do the di your diagnosis and the reasons why later, yeah? You, you back your family. So that's how I kind of generalize it with my sons and my daughters. I said, and my nieces and my cousins said, look, this is what we stand for. So that way, you know, if you're supporting, you'll have a unit. And from there, you can have other things in life. Because said, without relation, interpersonal relationships, you don't have much. Because said, it's like a superpower. I said, if you have a mind, it's like this room full of money, and there's no one in it. There's no one to share it with. You, you said, what are you going to do? Drive from down to sit in a fast car, a sports car, by yourself, and there's no one there? I said, you soon see how soon you, you think, oh, what's this all for then? I said, you, there's got to be a bit more than, you know, of nice clothes, trips out, 
you know, money, fast cars. You see what I mean? This has to be a bit more of in terms of legacy. All right, so, yeah, so that's, always, that's what I always show them. So let me ask you this question then. Mm. What is your relationship now with the mother of your sons? No, I don't. I work with my first son, yeah. his mother. I don't have anything to do with it. I blocked her. From once I, once I went for the appeal hearing in 2021, and they said, yeah, well, you know, we're not going to bring back, because I wanted them to bring back the child service worker so I could say, look, she lied in court and then she's been avoiding come to court back since and said, you've allowed it. And then she won't, she didn't add the ask for add an endem to um, change the legal document. Not much contact. So she's tried to email a few times, but I just blocked that now. I blocked it on mobile, on social media, on email. I don't really want to hear from her again. To be fair, my son's got my contact number. He's got my mobile. He's he reached out to me a few times since 2021 about our thing. I said, yeah, you can come around, son. But um, I would never allow you to take out your brother's sister because he said, oh, can I said, no, 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 not with the kind of characters that you interact with. I'd never allow my your younger siblings to be taken out of my sight with the kind of people you knock heads with. No way, no how. So I know that's upsetting. So he's been in trouble recently with um with the youth offence. Don't think it's, to be fair, doing something similar that I done when I was younger. But I said, look, son, the difference is, is when I done that, I was doing it to protect my family. When you're doing that, you're doing it for stupidness. You're doing it for ego. And how old is he now? He's 17 now. Okay, so mm. has he been in trouble with the law in terms of... No, no, it's the one time last year, February. He, he done something um, similar to me, a fray, offensive weapon. Mm. So I said, look, I can understand that. But he's telling them now that, oh, I don't want you reporting back to my dad over these Allegedly, things. yeah. <laughs> well, allegedly, yeah. allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. But I said, I don't want you reporting back to thing now. Mm. All right, so I know you've been doing some good work. Um, obviously, he's shown a good role model to your son of the work that you're doing. Mm. Now, I know that you're involved to do with the parliament. Um, what's, yeah, the, what's, the, what's all that the, about? The Westminster, the all parliamentary group for fathers. Mm. What happened is like a subcommittee where they discuss how they're going to improve conditions for fathers in the UK in terms of, you know, flexible working, more parental leave when you have, because you know at the moment they say, no, women need to work more, but because they're restricted to, you know, the parental leave, the dad's only got yeah. two weeks, they've got nine months, and they're thinking, oh, how can you then say the mother might not want to be at home all the time, they might want to go back to work as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And they said, and then they end up doing a lot of the domestic work and relying on the dad financially. So they said the name of gender parity they should be splitting of the leave. Mm. But for some reason, the current government don't want that. And to be fair and all- So what are you doing about it then? So what are you well, doing I'm, about I'm, it? Well, I'm trying to get more, more just not just that, more leave for parents with, for, in general. And for dads, I'm trying to get it to where they get nine months as well. Oh. So nine um, months for- yeah, for when you have a newborn, let's say if so your partner's pregnant, they get nine months off as well. So, so you're well, trying to get that for dads? Between them four and a half months, four and a half months. So the- that's the best way. So I you're think. saying that mm. you want fathers have four and a half months off mm. with the child? Yeah, with the child. And yeah. then the mum has yeah, four and a half, half months. If she wants to go back, if she wants to go, obviously okay. not forced, but if they want to, because you know, as much as people like to say, oh, pair of parent, you know, maternal instinct, there's no mother like mother love. That's not always the case. Okay. I've seen a lot of, especially from the running around years. I remember one when I worked in um, MROPS in London Bridge, an Australian girl asked me, oh, what do you prefer, your partner or your, your children? I said, my children, because they carry my DNA. So if I, if I break up the partner, she move on with somebody else. There's no genetic relation then. I'm just a distant memory. So she said, that's, that's odd, because I prefer my partner. So I was stunned. But then from the campaign work, I realized there's a few that's not really maternal like that. But I don't understand that though, like mm. to just even what you're saying. Mm. I'm with you on that. Like mm. Your kids should always come first in your relationship mm. before the person the person you're dating. Because mm. as you said, the person can always pick up themselves and move mm. on to a new relationship. Mm. But your kids are always gonna be there. Mm. So when people are trying to put their partner on top of their child, mm. I can't understand that. And to me, I think that's more of a turn off. Mm. I couldn't date a woman if she was putting me before, me before her children. Mm. That, that couldn't sit well with me. Mm. So I'm with you on that. You get me? I'm but with you, you on you, that. You'd be surprised. You, you, even as you've seen on, on social media, when the, them Americans were, oh, it's got to be the man first. Then, mm. the, then the wife. 
Then the children come third. That's the only way a household can function and stuff like that. No, and from that and began to church myself, I've seen there's a few people that tell you that, a few pastor mm-hmm. men over here have been saying that for years. So what's your whole thing about the child support service? What's your yeah, understanding the, about the, it? The, the, the child maintenance, it's child maintenance service now because the, the child support agency, they got rid of it um, in 2011. Mm. And what they've they done is the, all the payments that were missed or were arrears was transferred from the child support agency to the child maintenance service. So when I looked into it now from the campaign work through Split the Difference, Equal Start and that, um, Daddy's Worsties, I said, said, they showed me the reports. I said, my word, they've inflated the arrears by 300%. So I said, how is that even legal? Then I saw they started to make plans to be able to go into your account and take out money without a court order. So I said, that's open to abuse. But I saw government where they want, you know, the little fees, people are getting paid from it. So they don't keep this open in public. It's all under the surface. And if one in one kind of talks out, they kind of said, oh, we'll pull the rug out from underneath you. Or, you know, you'll never rise in your career if you, it's all that kind of stuff. Control. Said, yeah. So I said, imagine, you see the domestic abuse bill in 2021, they said coercive control. No bigger coercive than local authorities and, and central government. There's a lot of men committing suicide over it. Mm. There was one report that showed that um, basically there's 590 cases and 337 of them were false arrears, something similar like that. I'll have to check it, but mm. something similar in terms of numbers. So I said, how is that possible? Because that mantra about deadbeat dads not being paying their dues and things like that, they'll they'd be taking, say, for instance, we got a promotion at work and they'll take the best year of your income and make that as the payments that you have to make. Every well, he said the average over the thing. So I said, how is that possible? And he said, well, you know, if you're a responsible dad, you should be happy to pay and do more. I said, yeah, most people try to. But I said, in a cost of living crisis with the average salary, what is it, 32,000 in the UK? I said, how do you expect them to be able to have two different households, manage their own rent, maybe have other children somewhere else? And then they want everything or they want the main portion. So especially when mothers get child benefit, tax credits, because it's not until I became the resident parent for my daughter that I said, wait a minute, they're making still some money. £82 child benefit, £150 tax credits. A week. No, 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 no. Okay, no, okay. You know, you know, a, a month. A month, a month. I said, ah. yeah. yeah, but obviously if you're working, I said, well, that's a little thing. Remember, that's only one. Mm. So imagine if I had both of my boys as well under me as well. I said, my word. I said, you, you're talking about over a grand a month. Sean, time is up. No. So I want to say thank you for coming down today, my bro, and mm-hmm. for sharing your story. Is there anything you would like to say before we go? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. And um, people, we live in a country where you have men and women, mother and fathers. In order for things to be prosperous and the child to go up in the best environment, in my opinion, we've got to come to some kind of mutual agreement and it's got to be stable and consistent regardless of how you feel about your partner. Especially when it comes to like involving local government and family courts and things like that, child maintenance service, all it does is eat and dissolve, disintegrates the family structure. It's like a drip drip effect, time and pressure. And my whole purpose coming in today, as you know, with the equal start, trying to make sure there's a better gender parity because at the moment it's too much focus on you know the feministic viewpoint and not on the man viewpoint especially with dads so the, when you breed that kind of imbalance it becomes dysfunctional and that's where you get the misogyny so you don't you don't you don't have a happy society by creating circumstances that breed resentment you there needs to be love and connection so i said we we need to come together that's, that it has to be there has to be like and the mindset of oh you know you're just a dad that has to be abandoned because it's odious especially from when I've seen from my say my grandparents time come down how it's much better now where a lot more men are involved there's none of this real distance where they said you know what I don't want nothing to do with the situation that's a bastard child you're on your own so it's, it's if the dads are willing work with them they may not be able to give as much money as they can but you, nothing substitutes time. You can't redeem time. You can't buy back time. Time and love. Yeah, exactly. So when you're doing that, I said, you need to be coming together, making a rainbow so it's consistent and being a welcome haven, not something that's toxic where it's said, oh, you know what? I just can't stand this situation. I don't want to be 
around him because I don't like the mother. He said, you don't want it, you want it to be, you have your boundaries, but you want it to be welcoming enough so where there's, you know, genuine love and respect there. So they want to come and collect their child. There's none of this, oh, what's she going to do? Call police on me if uh, we have an argument or make mm -hmm. false allegations, which you know is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to come together. My, my mantra for that is justice in our time and where there's people, there's power. Agree, agree. Well said, Sean. Well said, well said. So this is up, everyone. I want to hear your lot's views today on today's episode in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press that like button. That's very important. Make sure you press that like button and make sure as well you look out for more episodes, all right? Also as well, just before I actually go, also do check out the Baby Father's website if you are looking for help, if you are having difficulties of seeing your child. And while you're there, do feel free to check out all our merchandise as well on our online store, which the top that I'm wearing today is my baby mother always gives me a headache. And we also have top saying father raises queens and father raises kings. Do check them out, all right? That's on the, all on the baby father's website, all right? So for myself, DJ Riddler, and from Sean. Thank you. Peace. And we out. Also, something else new to the Baby Fathers this year we're also introducing is a show called Have Your Have Your Say. The good thing about this show is that we go live once a week, which is every Thursday, Thursdays at 8 p.m., where we go live and where you can actually call up and have your say to based on whatever topic we decide to choose on that particular show. So make sure you check it out, which happens every Thursdays at 8 p.m., right here on the Baby Father's platform, live on YouTube, all right?